Now, I'm going to be tying this fly here. This is a Clyde style wet fly. Now, this is a, a blay in hair's ear. Now, what's unusual about this wet fly is, as you can see, it's an upwing, like it was a dry fly. The Clyde style flies uh, are basically tied in an upwing fashion and allowed to, you cast upstream and just allow them to drift back naturally. This is a blay in black, you can see with the hackle. I'm going to show you the blay in hair's ear, which is a, a favourite of mine, it's got a nice fly. Now, this, this comes from this book here, it's called Let's Fish the Clyde by Bert Sharp. Now, it's going to be quite hard to find this book, and it can, there is books out there, but they're over £200. For a book it only cost, for I think it's, it's in the book it says £1.50 when it first came out in the 70s. Now, it's, it's a great wee book, it's the first book I ever read in fly tying. There is another edition that came out, which is actually a, a really good one, it's a, a Let's Fish Again, but what it was his, I believe his, Bert's wife that did this, uh, brought this out, because he died. Uh, but he's a very well-known angler, and especially in the Clyde, and his flies are well looked after. But there's another book, which is called Clyde Style Flies by John Reed. It's been reprinted. Now it's got a lot of these flies in them as well, in it as well, and you'll see the Clyde Style fly. Uh, so if you're into it and you want to try them, the other books I would recommend. Now I'm going to show you, as I say, how to tie this fly here. So we're going to zoom in. I'm going to show you the fly itself a wee bit before we start. Now you can see there, uh, the upwing. It's a, quite a delicate fly. The hook choice is entirely up to yourself. This is a wee rough fly that, but this works a treat. And uh, if you cast this upstream and let it drift out naturally, it's, uh, it does pick up the fish. Now, years ago they would fish up to 8 to 9 in a cast. God knows how they cast them like, but they did and uh, in the Clyde style, but I would say maybe only, I like to fish two to three, which is fine. Now, as I said, the the hook choice is entirely up to yourself. This is an old mustad hook. What is, I am actually putting a collection of uh, these flies together, uh, and I'm using basically the uh, type of hook that may have been used way back then. This is quite a wide gate then. Uh, it's an old mustad. It's the 3984. Uh, I think it suits the short body, but it's got a nice gait for if you're going to be fishing these. A good grip. So the the equivalent would be the, the short shank special, uh, or a full mill do one like that. Or if you're just going to tie it in a standard hook, then you're looking at the, the all rounder, a medium wire hook. Uh, whatever hook you like, it's entirely up to you. But whatever you tie your wet flies on, then I would certainly give it a go. So, but anyway, I'm, because I'm sticking to the the original dressing, I'm using the piezo salt. I'm using an olive in this case. This is the old salts. The first thing you've got to do with the salts is to run your wax through it. And then run your fingers through it to take away the excess. And then obviously put it back onto the spool. Now I'm going to start round about a mil from the eye and then come down three or four turns and then remove the waste. Now for the wing. I'm using, this is from Vineyards, these are they call water hen or moor hen quills. Quite a dark uh, dun, as a, if you want to call it. It's, quite, it's good for iron blues. Now, what you do is, if I've got a feather here, it's going to take, there's a couple here with some muck on them, so take them away. You bring it out, you're going to fold it, you're not going to use a right and a left, you're going to fold or roll these fibres. Now, for a fly this size, you're looking round about maybe 15 mil or so uh, fibre. You're going to fold it into uh, three. So we take it off and the tips have lined up. You can tear it away from the feather. And then basically roll it roll in, uh, into itself so you can see the outside of the... Sorry, the inside of the feather. The outside, the inside. Now, as I say, what I'm going to do, I'm trying to show you this, so... It's much easier to see. It's quite hard within your fingers. I'm bringing it back out. So basically there's, this is the outside. And then I'm going to roll it towards you. So I'm going to fold it into three. So I'm just going to bring it around. There's one. So that's, that's doubled up. And then that's three. And there we are. That's hopefully you could see that okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie it forward to the eye. 
The reason I'm tying it forward is that it's much easier to hide the waist at the back and taper into the body rather than what she was done was basically tied forward and then you lift the wing up with the threads but you had the waist going over the eye and I prefer to tie it like this so that's just a personal thing. But what I'm going to do is get the length which is round about just hook length tied forward so we get the, the wing right onto the shank pinch and loop nice and easy let it slip through your fingers tighten it and come in with another one and then another one just to finish see how our wing's sitting check my length you'll not get a perfect wing it's just it's close enough now that's fine don't worry about it because well, what some people we used to, well, what some people like to do anyways, but we touch a varnish at the tip to hold it together. Now I don't do that. It's just keep it natural if you can. Cut it at an angle like this. Now it'll give you help. You give a taper into the body. Now there's a small tag at the back, and I'm using this. This is a tinsel, just a flat tinsel and small. Now I'll come down with two or three turns, then catch it in the side. It's on my side, and I'm going to wind down the shank to this point here then I'm going to come up three or four turns with the, the thread then I'm going to wind the tinsel in this area so it's a small tag so you're looking two to three turns that's fine and then catch it in three or four turns just to make sure it's not going to move trim away I'm trying to reduce the number of turns now we can tie this in the waist end of the tinsel with our dubbing. And the dubbing is hair's ear, so we've got the dubbing of the hair, the ear here. So we just tear it away. It's quite easy to do that. And then lightly dub it onto your thread. Just slide it up. I'm just going to tighten it up a wee bit. And you start it where I want, just in where the tag is. And then tighten it as we go. The wax thread does give you a wee bit more grip. I usually take it right up to the wing like there. Now what I want to do is just lift the wing up don't catch your thread but lift the wing up and then do a couple of turns just right in at the base but not onto the wing and get it to sit just to lift the, to lift the wing. Now what I'm going to do is get some dubbing, more dubbing. This is for the legs. Now because I've got the mask I like to actually come down into the longer fibres and pull them out just there we are. And then I'm going to dub these onto the thread. It's really easy to dub on. Just lightly dub it on. And then spin it one way. I'm going to hold the wing again, draw it back, and then take the, the dubbing out and close. Just watch your wing, just make sure it's going to sit. I mean, I'm being a wee bit more fussy with it, just I want to show you how to do it. Uh, but basically, once you start to fish this fly, the wing will go all over anyway, so. So we get to this point here. Then, to varnish the head and to finish it off, it's much easier just to apply the varnish, especially by here, like near the head like this, it's much easier just to apply the varnish to the thread and then whip finish. You're looking, maybe three turns is fine. Tighten up. Trim away your thread. Be quick, see how it goes. As I say, some people like to have a wee touch of varnish in the end, but don't because it's too stiff. Now, as I say, these are cast upstream. Now, at the same time, what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to bring out some of the longer fibres with the dubbing needle. Just take your time when you're doing this take away some of these at the back because I want to try and get that shape in the body. I don't want to lose the shape too much. It's a rough wee fly. It's an unusual fly to some people. They'll, they'll look at it and scratch their head. But it's a good part and if you fish this upstream let it drift naturally. They say the blade black. There's a, this is a blade black with a hackle. Uh, as you can see Lightly dressed with the upwing again, cast upstream. Nice pattern, very easy to tie. Once you get into them, it's quite simple to tie. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching that tying of the, the hair's ear, blade and hair's ear. 
Uh, it's a Clyde style wet fly as I say. Good fun, worth looking into. If you can get the, as I say, the easiest book to get would be the, uh, the Clyde style flies by John Reed. And it has the patterns in it, so I hope you enjoyed that.